Hi, I'm Marilyn Wolf. This is Computers as Components, Chapter 1, Model Train Design Example, Sequence and State Diagrams. So let's look at some cases for the uh, control panel input. So let's um, assume that we have a soft panel here. That is, for instance, we don't have a knob for changing the, the train number. Okay? We have, up, say, up and down buttons and then we have a display that shows the current train. Okay, so when, we, uh, when the user changes the train number, then the soft panel's uh, display has to be updated to reflect what train is being activated. Right? So when the user uses the, the, the panels, uh, the user will set the train number and then set the speed, set the inertia, and so forth. So if we get one of those other messages, then we're going to um, figure out what changed and then actually send a message to do it. Here is a sequence diagram showing uh, the panel side operation. Here are the knobs that the user actually deals with. Here's the front panel itself, the formatter for the messages, and the transmitter that talks to the tracks. So here we have a change in the control settings. We have a function that reads the panel does a format operation and then sends a message over the tracks. Okay. Meanwhile, the panel keeps reading the knobs. And in this case here, nothing changed so that we don't have to actually do anything. Down here, the train number knob changed, which means that we have to set some values, but we don't generate a new message. Okay. Then down here, we may have another message which will farther on down below the bottom of this page cause another message to be sent. Here is a state diagram for the formatter, one of the functions that was in that sequence diagram. So this keeps running, it has an idle state, and this panel activate function sets an event when something actually changed on the front panel. When it does, we figure out what happened. If the train number changed, then we update the, the panel, uh, the soft panel display, but we don't have to send a message. If something else changed, then we need to actually do that operation. Now here is a um, state diagram for the panel activate behavior that generates that event that says that something changed on the panel. So we're going to read the train knob first, see if that changed. If it did change, then you're going to set the internal variables for the f f train knob, you're going to update the screen, and so forth. But if it, the train knob didn't change, check the speed knob. If that did change, then you set the throttle and so forth. And if that wasn't it, then you check the other knobs, the inertia and the um, emergency stop. Here's the controller class. Once again, remember that we have arrays for the speed, the direction, the inertia, um, so that we remember all the values for all the trains. We have a function for the operate. We have a function for issue command. Okay. Now, um, a nicer way to implement the speed control is to not change the speed instantaneously. So if, you, if the user changes the speed knob, then the controller can send a set of messages to gradually change the speed to the new value. Here's a sequence diagram for the speed command. So this is on the train side. Here's the receiver, that's the physical interface, the controller function, the motor interface, and then the pulser. Okay, so we get a new command. Um, the command type is receive speed, we set speed, and then we um, set the pulse several different times as we ramp up or down the speed. Okay. Here's the controller operate behavior. We received a command, we're watching the tracks. We, when we get a receive command, we actually then issue the command and then we go back and wait. Here's a class for the command. We filled in some more details now. So here's the format of the command. Here are the actual command types. So you can see that we filled in the bits that specify the type here. We've also said that different commands have different lengths of parameters. Of course, we don't know the value of that 
value slot until somebody actually sends a message. So in summary, the state diagram specified the behavior of the components, the sequence diagrams show the interactions between the controller and the train and between the different pieces of each one of those.